much more competitive contest coming up in our main event. Carl Dargan, undefeated, 17-0 with nine knockouts, facing off against Canadian Tony Lewis. That's coming up. It is now time for our main event, and we expect a very good one. Here's our tale of the tape. Carl Dargan, 29 years old. He is undefeated, 135 pounds, a 69-inch reach. As for his opponent, Tony Lewis. That's the way he wants it pronounced. He's from Canada. Two losses in his career. He was very competitive in both of those. And he's ready to fight tonight. He's got his war outfit on, ready to go here in one of the biggest fights of his career. He also fought Ivan Redcatch two fights ago. That certainly was a moment for him. He went down in that fight, but got back up, felt he won, but lost a unanimous decision. Carl Dargan, very hyped up. I mentioned earlier, Bernard Hopkins, who knows him very well, said, listen, it's not a matter of if, but when. Carl Dargan is a world champion, an extensive amateur career, and he won a gold medal at the 2007 Pan American Games. It's Super Bowl weekend. It's time for Teddy's fight plan, and yes, it comes with a former Super Bowl champion. This seems to be inflated just about perfect, but that's not going to be the question tonight. Tonight, the question is going to be, who can pump up more punches? And being that it is Super Bowl weekend, I figured, who better to find out the answer to that question than a former Super Bowl champion? Mr. Antonio Pierce. Hey, you're right. This is pumped up a little bit. Yeah. It's not deflated. No, no, this is good. This, you can win with this one. We can win with this. Good to have you with us. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Get rid of that. Who needs a big skin? No, no, no. I don't like that. We're talking about boxing. Let's now we have this. All right? What you got? All right, well, you were a defensive player. Yes, sir. So I got a funny feeling that you would probably favor Dargan. Yeah, I like defense. Yeah, well, he knows defense. Right. He would be like Seattle for me. Okay. If you're going to set up the game. Right. And Lewis, his opponent, who you're going to play, well, he would be more offense. Okay. And he likes the blitz. And I think when he comes forward, that Mr. Dargan, I'll play him, right. he can take advantage a little bit. He right. likes to come forward, throw that jab, bang, bang, Ooh, slip it. Throw that right uppercut. If he does that well, you remember you guys used to be asked, what are you doing after the Super Bowl? Where are you going? I'm going to Disney World. I'm going with him. All right, now how does Lewis make sure that the ad doesn't get taken out of his fight plan? I'll be Lewis. You'll be dogging. I know you were a linebacker. You knew something about play action. Yeah. Oh, you're smiling. You got faked out, didn't you? Yeah, when I was younger. Man, rookie, you got me. Um, a couple times. A couple times. But when I got older, I was better. You were a pro bowler. Yeah. A little bit. You yeah. won a Super Bowl. That's pretty good. You got good. Okay. All right, now, I think that Doggin can be made to bite a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's a defensive guy, but sometimes he chases a little bit. I notice when you jab to his body, he does that. He chases. He leaves that open. Mm. So what do you do? That play action. You fake the run. Okay. Now, if you lose, you do this. Bang, fake it. Bang, you got him. Pass right upstairs. Right into the end zone. Right. Pay dirt. Right. Got a quick first step there. No, Good you. reaction time. You've been in the end zone a few times? Twice in my NFL career. Great stuff there with Teddy Atlas and Antonio Pierce in our studios, Bristol, Connecticut. About an hour and a half drive from Foxwoods Resort and Casino. So you see it as more defense versus offense tonight. No, I do. I mean, look. Well, in all fairness, Lewis isn't exactly going to China shop. He's just uh, going to walk in and knock things over. He thinks a little bit. He picks his spots a little bit. But he's going to be the aggressor, and Dog is going to be the counterpuncher. Tony. Carl, you received your instructions in the dressing room. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Above all, obey my commands at all times. First command is right now, touch gloves. And the bell rings, box. Carl Dynamite Dargan, nicknamed Dynamite because he said back in the day, he fought like Mike Tyson. Came rushing in, looking for a power punch, one punch knockout. He certainly evolved since then. 
become more defensive oriented, a counter puncher, up, but the that, nickname that, like stuck. The ambition, in fact, if you go around again. Philadelphia gyms right now, you, you ask ready, for Tony? Carl Dargan, Carl, you ready? they may not know who you're talking about, Do it. but if you ask for Dynamite, they'll point you in that man's direction. He's wearing black and gold trunks, taking on Tony Lightning Lewis in the camo. Both fighters orthodox, you know, in the righty stance, but Lewis naturally lefty. Just switch back and forth a little bit. For me, his dominant hand, of course, you know, he's naturally lefty. That would be his left hand. So for me, his best punch for Lewis would be his left hook. Dargan, not known as a power puncher, 17 0, nine knockouts, but he does have three consecutive knockouts, Teddy. You see him sort of evolving now into that type of power puncher. When you get confidence, you start to sit down a little bit, you start to see things in the ring. First of all, your timing gets better. When your timing's better, your power's better because you land the cleaner shots, shots that guys don't see. You don't have to be, you know, George Foreman then. So, again, it's all about seeing things, getting calm. You know, like the other athletes say, the game's slowing down. And when you start to get to where Dargan's trying to get to, things slow down in the ring for you. You see things a lot better. And that's where he's at. And when you're sitting down and you're calm, yeah, you're going to be more effective in every way. One of them would be power, too. But you can see the defensive moves of Dargan and the aggression of Lewis. Lewis has lost twice, Todd, when he has moved up to a higher level of talent. And, of course, he's moving up again tonight. So figure that out as, as I put it there. Good counter punch a few moments ago by Dargan. Lewis was cut by head clash two fights ago. You know, he is aggressive. Nazim Richardson, the trainer for Carl Dargan, said that Lewis won't back down. He's always in shape. Said that he likes to lead with his head like Timothy Bradley does. I don't know about that, but he has been involved, as I just said a moment ago, in head clashes. And Dargan, for me, Dargan seems to cut opponents with his punches. Seems to get a certain snap, a certain torque on his punches that causes some laceration. See that right hand? You missed it, but I don't know. We'll see the replay. Maybe our guys will catch it later, but just a minute ago, Dargan used his right hand to catch that jab to the body of Lewis. He dropped it, just like I talked about in the fight plan. If Lewis is corner or Lewis himself can see that, there it is again. That right hand of Dargan, he drops it to catch it, and that's, you know, that's getting out of place. That's, you know, you're chasing again. And when you're chasing, there's nobody home. If Lewis takes advantage of that, like we talked in the fight plan, gives a little fake down there, there's going to be nothing up top. Quickly, how do you defend a jab to the body then without exposing your head? You use your elbow. You don't drop your hand. The elbow is there to protect without leaving your head open. Or you use your legs to step out. A good jab there by Dargan. Round one. Done. You remember the fight plan. We'll take a look here. Lewis throws the jab to the body, and look at that right hand of Dargan. Reaches down to block it. Watch again. Reaches down to block it. Lewis should have looked at tape maybe the way I looked at tape and realized that that habit is there. Habits stay with you. They don't develop the night of the fight. They're there from the gym. It's Lewis, like, Lewis probably and his people maybe should have done a little bit more homework, a little bit more tape work, like Belichick and Pete Carroll are doing, getting ready for the Super Bowl to see that tendency. Because if they were aware of that tendency, they could have taken advantage of it already. Maybe he was just listening to Mr. Miyagi and Karate Kid, the wax on, wax off defense. <laughs> Round two of scheduled 10, Carl Dynamite Dargan. Out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, grew up in the gym watching Bernard Hopkins, Sugar Mosley train. Some big names. And Hopkins, one of Dargan's biggest supporters. Okay, you're attached to your temperament. And the talent of Dargan, he has talent, is attached to his temperament. He's careful, he's thoughtful. He looks cool, calm, and collected in there. He's a defensive-minded guy. That's what he is. And that's how he's going to try to make his living. Dargan is engaged to Lil Mo, also known as Cynthia Young. She stars in the R&B Divas LA reality show. Teddy, I know you're a big fan of that. So he likes to live the glam life as well. Okay. Well, right now, he's living a careful life. He's on the outside. 
you know, staying out of range, trying to control range, looking for spots to take advantage maybe of a little reckless aggression or lose. That's what he's looking to do. Bargain is a sharpshooter. You know, he's a guy that only fights in spots. He doesn't like to waste much. And he's a sharpshooter. When he does shoot at you, it's usually that. Straight, concise, and with a little snap. Bargain's best punch, probably that right uppercut. Or counter right hand over the top of a jam. Look for that right uppercut maybe in here. And watch that head of Lewis. I see a little Billy Goat in there. That's called riding with a punch. You know, you can see Doggin has pretty good eyes in there. He's looking, and if he doesn't slip a block of punch, he's looking to ride it. Go with it. Pull away from it. Would Lewis like this fight to stay there in close quarters in a phone booth the whole time? Yeah, but the only reason it's there, Doggin wants it there right now. Doggin thinks that he can do something inside some of those shots. He thinks that he can counter in between maybe one of the wider shots of Lewis. Boxing loss, one of its more gregarious characters this past week. Cedric Kushner, one of the great boxing promoters, died in New York City. Promoter Lou DiBella, one of Kushner's good friends, said, quote, this is another one of those days, a sad day, where the sport of boxing got a little less colorful. Cedric Kushner was 66 years old. Lou DiBella said it right. Boxing did lose a little color, one of its Damien Runyon type characters that boxing is famous for. And Kushner was that kind of character and did add that kind of fun and color to the sport. It has some great fighters under his watch as well. You saw him on the screen there. We're in round three of a scheduled ten. Both Dargan and Luis have only been a full ten rounds once. Lewis, excuse me, have been a full ten rounds once in their career. Lewis has been knocked out one time. Most of the fights for Lewis, you touched on it, in Canada. 15-0 in Canada. 3-2 in the United States. And knocked out one time in those 3-2. And, and wait a minute, Dargan goes down. They're saying it's a slip. Lewis says, wait, I got it. And Lewis obviously has liked the fighting up north a lot better than he has in the United States. And Lewis's fight against Ivan Redcash two fights ago. Redcash's glove touched the, the canvas in the first round. That wasn't ruled a knockdown, and it should have been. And Lewis felt like he should have gotten a decision there. Let's see if that comes back to haunt him. We'll take a look at that possible knockdown coming up later. And now Lewis perhaps smells some blood in the water. He's trying to get right in there on Dorgan again. Yeah, I think you might be right. I think that Dargan might have gotten a gift by not being down right now at two points. He might have gotten away with the referee may have missed one. We'll see it after this round. But again, you talked about it earlier. Lewis is where he wants to be. You know, taking the legs away from Dargan, taking some of his speed away. And taking some of his dimensions away. There's no dimension when you're against the ropes. There's only one dimension. You can block, you can slip, you can lick the counter in between a little bit. But that's it. You can't lose the ring, you can't get angles, you can't have space that you want to throw a nice shot as a guy comes in, maybe a little reckless. Right now, Dargan helping out Lewis, the underdog in this fight, by laying on the ropes. You know, we talk about geography all the time. I joke around sometimes and say fighters should, you know, sometimes they should, Tony, let go. They should go to a real estate broker before they fight. You know, find out about location. 
because it's all about location. And Lewis has the location he wants. In close with Doug and Trap on the ropes. When we return, we'll take a look at that controversial slip slash knockdown. You guys watch with me. I think the referee missed one. Left hook right on the chin. And then no, his leg goes up. Why does leg go up? Because he got hurt. Because his nerves reacted. It was a knee-jerk reaction. Watch. Left hook, bang. His leg goes up. He's hurt. He gets pushed down a little bit. Referee was out of position. Referee made a mistake there. Should have been a 10-8 round. Instead, it'll be 10-9. We don't know which way, but it was certainly the best yes. round for Lewis. You no, know, you get hit. Sometimes your body does funny things. Your leg jumped up in the air. You know, and <laughs> he got hit. His leg jumped up in the air. And the second punch he blocked, but the first one landed really clean. That should have been a knockdown. And again, it's up to the referee to be in position. I mean, he has a job to do in there. And part of his job is being in the right position. You know, I talked about location earlier. About location, location, location. And I talked about the fighters in the ring having to be in the right location. We just want to be close. Dog and I think needs space to be at his best, to use his hand speed, to be able to kind of punch the way he wants, to be able to allow Lewis room to make a mistake. So it's about location, but it's about location for the ref too. The referee has to be in position to see what's going on. He wasn't in position that last round. To be fair, as Dargan was falling down, you could see Lewis put both his hands on the back of Dargan, so at the end, it sort of looked like a push down. No, no, but the, you got to see that punch, that initial punch. That's what counted, and you never saw that. In his last fight, Dargan was knocked down against Angino Perez, got off the canvas to win that fight via knockout. Dargan technically did not get knocked down in round three, but he is in a little bit of trouble. I think Dargan, again, I said it earlier, I think the best punch is the right uppercut. He's going to get an opportunity maybe to put that punch to good use with Lewis who leans forward a little bit on the inside. And Lewis being a little shorter. Good left hand. Yeah, well, that's the best punch for Lewis. Again, he's a natural lefty. So that left hand is dominant hand. And Lewis is turning into a bully here against Dargan. Pushing him back, staying inside, more active. Landing bigger shots. <laughs> Little subtle things by Lewis inside. Turning. He just took his right glove and he turned the elbow of Doggin. Just to turn him a little bit out of position so he could hit him. And Doggin couldn't hit back. Little subtle moves. <laughs> Little smart things. Again, there it is again. Just a little move by Doggin. Little move by Doggin on the inside. I should say by Lewis. Takes the left elbow of Doggin with his right glove. Turns it a little bit. And what's it do? It gets Doggin out of position and Lewis in position to score. This is the Lewis's fight. This is a big upset so far. Probably go. It's not about only muscle, it's the sweet science. Watch this little move right here. See how he turns him, he takes his elbow, and Lewis turns him and positions Doggin where he could get off. And then later on, gets off again. And then at the end of the round, well, Lewis, the underdog, he's trying to send a message there. I'm not intimidated by you. I'm not intimidated, intimidated by your 17 and 0 record, by your three national titles that you won in the amateurs. Tonight, I'm here to show you what I have. For the first time as a pro, Lewis said his wife is not here in person cheering him on. She's eight months pregnant. They will deliver a son next month. Lewis is dedicating tonight's performance to his unborn son. I said, talk about a lot of pressure, Teddy. You can't bring your kid in this world with a loss already on his record, can you? No, no, it's not allowed. Somewhere. And there again is the right glove. What's that right glove inside of Lewis? See, there he goes again. He just turns. He's got the better position right now because he turned Doggett. Sweet science, baby. Believe it or not, Dargan has a substantial amount of fan support here from Philadelphia, but they haven't made much noise because Lewis has been the boss so far. 
We're in round five of a scheduled 10, and if Dargan does have a plan for fighting inside, we'd sure like to see it, because so far, it hasn't been so good. Give credit to George Lewis, a father of Tony Lewis for teaching him those little subtle things on the inside. Carl, let go. There's our scorecards. Teddy has it three rounds to one. So do you, scoring on our Facebook page. But Lewis doesn't trust the judges. He says he trusts no one in the sport of boxing except the guys in his corner. Good left hook by Lewis. That's his best punch again. As the body goes upstairs, he doubles it up. A little bump and run there. A little bump and run. A little bump with the shoulder by Lewis. Again, little subtle things. Bumped it with the shoulder there. And then he got a little space. And then he punched. Well, Teddy, it's no surprise. We all expected Lewis to be right in Dargan's face. Throw a lot of punches. Never take a step back. But why hasn't Dargan be able, hasn't he been able to do anything about it? He's never been in this kind of fight. He's being tested. Maybe we're seeing him tested in a way that he's not ready for. Maybe we're seeing something inside him that we've never had a chance to see before. We're going to find out. He's going to find out about himself tonight, and so are we. Good work by Lewis. All Lewis on the inside. This is Lewis's domain. He wants to be there. He's exactly where he Step wants to be. Back, don't punch. Time. Get the job done. Come on, come on. Okay, take a look at the bump and run. We're gonna see a replay right here. I was talking about. Watch the left shoulder. A little bit of a bump. Right there. Bump and then run with the punch. Little space created. And then Lewis goes to work. A little bump with that left shoulder. And now it's time for Teddy to take us inside the ropes. You want to create a little room on the inside? He's squishing you a little bit, jamming you a little bit. Well, not exactly Marcus of Queensbury rules, but not dirty either. Just take advantage of a situation if you can. Make sure the referee's not over there. Make sure he's over here, he doesn't see it. He might stop you, but you're in here with your shoulder, need a little room, just a little bump. A little bump, get a little separation, bang, bang, and run. It works. And it's been working so far for Lewis, who despite being a seven to one underdog, right yeah. now it seems is in control here in our main event. Big left hand turned into a windmill shot, bunch of air. But not much else. And Dargan, wearing the gold and black trunks, needs to find an answer, needs to be more active, and he needs to do it now. Very simple for Lewis. Tucks up real tight, gets in close, where he can take some of those elements, some of the talent away from Dargan. You know, he can take that space away, where he can counter punch on the outside. You know, Dargan, you would think, would want space where Lewis maybe could get a little reckless with his aggression, reach in a little bit, and Dargan can have a little space with those quick hands, but by allowing Lewis to stay close to him, there's none of those opportunities there for him. There's no space for Lewis really to make mistakes. And for Dargan, really, to use his feet. Now it's more of a physical fight inside, not about speed so much. Now it's about bumping. It's about grinding. You know, it's about little turns and subtle things like Lewis is doing right now. Lewis doing a great job. Again, tripling up that left hook. One downstairs, two, three upstairs. And then a little head movement at the right time. Moving after his last punch to make sure that he doesn't get caught. In other words, Lewis not taking a picture after he punches. And you can see Lewis holding Dargan's left arm down with his right hand. And I'm not sure what the game plan is here for Dargan. Again, I'm going to say it again. Listen, you find out about people in that square circle, that chamber of truth that I say sometimes. You find out 
what's inside somebody. Lewis is finding out what's inside Doggins. Maybe there's nothing inside him. Maybe there's great talent and speed when he has his way. But when he doesn't have his way, maybe he doesn't have that ability to dig down. We're going to find out. Lewis wants to find out. And if Dargan is hoping that Lewis will quit throwing punches, it's not in his DNA. It's all he knows. Stand there and just let your hands go. Lewis is not just in position to pull off an upset. Winning a fight is dominating. Dominating over the undefeated Dargan. And look at the way he turns him again. Keeps doing it. Turns him a little bit. Gets Dargan a little out of position. Keeps position where he can work. And watch the legs of Lewis, too. Little subtle movements every once in a while when he needs to. When he needs to step to the side. When he needs to step back a little bit. Watch. He goes back. He steps back. He gives himself a little move. But he doesn't get pushed back. Where now he can work. Little moves to the side again by Lewis. At 37 years of age, oh, and sometimes it's better just to get hit that one shot and you're out of there instead of taking shots for four rounds. Lacey took shots on, for four rounds. I don't think that Lacey should be allowed to fight again until he's oh, really, on, really man. tested by Commissioner Doctors. You're watching our main event, Tony Lightning Lewis, a big underdog, 7-1, to one, taking on undefeated Carl Dynamite Dargan. I asked Lewis yesterday if he thought that Dargan would one day be a champion or fight for a championship. And Lewis said, yes, he's that good, but he's not going to fight anytime soon for a title because I'm going to beat him on Friday night. And so far, that looks like the game plan is working perfectly because Lewis, outside of perhaps round number one, has almost pitched a shutout. You know, sometimes there's things out there that we don't look at. You see 17 and 0. Wow, okay. But we don't look at Lewis. Yeah, he's lost twice, but he's been in tough fights. He's been in real fights where Dawkins has it. And he is tonight. And he might not be prepared for what he's facing tonight. Also, maybe an ominous sign if you look into the history of Doggett. He won a split decision over an eight, five, and five opponent and was on the floor in that fight. Oh, he's not in with an eight, five, and five opponent tonight. Uh, let go. I see if Dargan's traveling fans from Philly are screaming jab, box him on the outside, but apparently Dargan either doesn't want to or simply can't do that. Dargan was on the floor in his last fight. He's been on the floor twice in his career. I talked about Vasily Giroff and James Tony fighting in this very building. One of the fights of the year, I believe it was the fight of the year. And that fight at least sort of looked like this, where they were both standing in there, shoulder to shoulder, fighting on the inside, just throwing tons of punches. Teddy's scorecard, you've got it as an upset. Lewis 59, Dargan 55. And Dargan just has to be more active. He's not known for his knockout power, nine KOs in 17 fights. Well, but to be more active, I'm going to put something before that statement. To be more active, he's got to get off the ropes. He's got to be in a better place, a better position to be more active. There's that little head movement I talk about. You know, Lewis doesn't take pictures. If he punches, at the right time, he moves his head and makes a miss. Dargan's corner, a little more happy with what they saw last round, but they wanted to come at different angles. No. And that's incorrect, by the way. This is not the last round. Ten rounds. Ten rounds. Let's go. This is round eight of ten. Got the ring down there, Lewis, now. Doing everything he needs to do. He, all of a sudden, Dargan decides to use his legs. What does Lewis do? He cut the ring down, shrunk the ring. 
and got back to work. Zim Richardson, the trainer for Dargan, told us that the, head. the best attribute that Dargan has is his intelligence test. I don't know how intelligent it is to lay on the ropes for seven rounds. Let go of it. Let go. Six rounds. So he's going to start showing me a different part of that intelligence that I've seen so far. Let go of him. He's fighting an aggressive guy, a little short, stocky guy like Lewis. I don't think he should be laying on the ropes too much. Now Dalton is sensing and feeling the urgency. He's starting to look to work in between with big power shots, looking to hurt Lewis. He might, I'll tell you, Dargan might be in a position now, so far behind their eight ball, that he needs to land the power shot, needs to hurt Lewis, to stem the tide of this fight. Dargan's left hand is being held down around his waist, meaning the right hand of Lewis continues to just catch the jaw of Dargan over and over again, right there. And again, the little sweet science stuff inside. Doggett every once in a while, or Lewis every once in a while, turning Doggett, he turned him again. Takes that right elbow and just turns it. The crowd chanting, Tony! They've come down from Cornwall, Ontario to root on their man. You see the punches, but there's the bump and run again. And a smart move by Lewis. He knew the referee was on the other side. <laughs> what did he do? He bumped and ran a little. Bumped him with the shoulder and a little space to punch. He won't do it now because the referee's on that side. That means, that tells me Lewis is aware of all surrounding. And what is uh, Dargan complaining about? He's saying either he was poked in the eye or headbutted. I didn't see any of that. I didn't either, but it gave him the reprieve that perhaps he needed. And now Lewis going right after him. Well, yeah, Lewis knows what time it is. In his mind, he knows what time it is. You know what time it is? It's time to find out about Doggin. Maybe the first time he's ever been in a real fight. What's inside him? Take a look, a little bang into the head right there. Little Billy Golden, both guys in there with the head. We said it right at the beginning. Lewis has been involved in headbutts. That's his style. He gets in there a little bit, bang the heads. Maybe that's why Doggin was saying that he couldn't see for a second. I think, I, I, for me, Doggin just hasn't been in this kind of fight before. And he's been shaken up by the reality of this kind of fight. And now he's got two rounds to get it unshaken and get going and pull it out of the fire because he's in a fire right now. I mean, he really is. And for me, he needs a knockout or at least a couple of knockdowns to pull this fight out and stay on the field. Lewis felt he was robbed two fights ago against Ivan Redcatch, but the judges didn't give him the decision that he deserved. And you can see he's not resting on his laurels, Ted. He's going right after Gargan again here in round nine. Well, that's his style. I mean, if he fought any other way and there was space and he started showboating, that's not his style. That wouldn't serve him. This serves him. In the grill, in the kitchen, going to work. And again, taking some of the ability, some of the talent that dog gonna have, take it away. Take some of the speed away. Make it more physical. Take some of his counterpunching ability away. Give him no space to counterpunch. He can't miss You can't The game plan has been a disaster for Carl Dargan, by any stretch of the imagination. Whatever it was he was trying to do, he hasn't done. Lewis has just been peppering him to the body and the head for most of the nine rounds we've had here. Yeah, Nazim Richardson, the trainer for Dargan, I mean, he can't be too happy with what he's saying. On the other side, I said it earlier, George Lewis, the father and trainer of Lewis, has to be obviously very happy. And there's a little head movement at the right time again by Lewis. And when Dargan throws punches, they usually land. He just hasn't thrown them. Another headbutt, it looked like, there from Lewis. When a guy has more speed than you, what do you do? You can push him up against the ropes, fight him in a phone booth, tight quarters, 
eliminate the use of some of that speed. And that's what Lewis has done. Dogan trying to counter in between in spots. Trying to counter with a, you know, a cleaner shot, a big shot, a telling shot. But you know what? At this point, he needs more than a shot. Nice uppercut there by Lewis. He's been there all night long. If Dargan was hoping that Lewis would tire, he can keep hope alive all he wants to, but it ain't happening. We're going to stay here between rounds and listen to the corners, the final instructions for the fighters as they get ready for the last three minutes of what has been a bruising encounter in our main event. That should be another one in the bag. Bend over. Bend over. We got one round to go. We got one round to go, baby. One round to go. One round to go, and we cracked the top ten. They can't take no. Give them no choice, Tony. They can't take it from you. Don't get careless. Keep that fence around your house. Move your head. Don't get careless. Okay? He's gonna come for broke. He's got nothing. Take a cross out step on him, take a quarter step around, and then you have the space you need. And the final round, we're going to touch him out. Can we keep his head off him? Yeah, come on. Yes, right. I need your space. You need your space, and you can get your knockout. Well, hopefully, the father of Louis, you just heard him. Hopefully, for their sake, he's right that they can't take this away from us. Because we've seen yeah, in this up. business, as much as it bothers us, we've right, seen it, some horrendous decisions, and we've seen some terrible robberies, and we've seen judges take away fights from fighters that earned the fight. Hopefully that's not the case tonight. One of the most egregious we've seen recently was in December right here on Friday Night Fights. Tyson Cave was robbed. Go of each other. But you could hear Dargan's corner telling him, listen, you need a knockout. Create some space and get it. Round 10 of 10. Carl Dynamite Dargan, a future world champion if you ask Bernard Hopkins, who grew up watching Dargan train as a youngster. 17-0, nine knockouts, but Tony Lewis had other plans. He has that turn again. Lewis made a little turn, took that elbow, and turned Dargan. We got him out of position where he could work a little bit. Watch the legs of Lewis. I know we're watching the punches, but watch the legs, the feet of Lewis. They take a little step back. He, see, they put, step back, keep his position, go, so he's ready to punch again. Instead of getting pushed back and smothered where he can't work, he feels the pressure of Dargan, and when he feels the pressure, he gives a little ground. He takes little steps and keeps position again. Takes little steps back so he can oh, keep he position and doesn't get out of position. Now he can work again. They go each other. Oh, maybe a knockdown right there. Looked like a knockdown. Referee wasn't sure. But now he is sure. Six, seven, eight, good. All those left hooks banging and banging and banging. <laughs> Lewis finally got the result he wanted. And now Lewis thinks he can finish it here in round 10. What an exclamation point this would be. Yeah, but he better not get a little greedy. He, might not, he better not get careless and throw one too many or one a little too fat. We give Dargan a chance to do the only thing he could do now and pull lightning out of the sky by punching in between. And Dargan just tried it a minute ago. Tried to punch in between the left hook with the right hand. That's Dargan's only shot now. Watch. Right there. He's looking to throw the right hand in between the left hook. You see it there, Todd? Absolutely. He's got 25 seconds to land that punch, and it better be a doozy. Yeah, he's looking for the right hand. That's his best punch, the uppercut or the straight right. Dawkins looking to throw it at the right time. In between, he's hoping a fat hook of Lewis.
So there you have it. Tony Lightning Lewis. And his corner thinks he won. And even Carl Dargan himself is walking over, congratulating him on what seems to be a lock victory. Yeah, give Dargan credit, showing class there. Watch the left hooks there. Looked like maybe he slid on the back of his head. We'll take another look at that. First, it was one underneath. There's the right uppercut in there. Left hook downstairs. The left hook upstairs, a little bit behind the head. We'll take another look. I think it might have been just a tiny bit behind the head. Take another look here. Yep, a little behind the head. Not on purpose, but was behind the head a little bit. Referee was in good position. He was right there. And down goes Doggett. First, it was the body shot, then upstairs. As Tony Lewis picked up the biggest win of his career, it seems so, but we'll find out officially when Friday Night Fights returns. Coming up next, it is Sports Center, but we've got some things to tend to here at the Fox Theater first. Teddy's scorecard. 99 to 90 he has the big underdog tony lightning lewis winning as for those of you scoring at home the same way nine rounds to one there's tony lewis's father celebrating but is it premature let's get the official decision Better not be. right now ladies and gentlemen after 10 bruising rounds we go to the judges scorecards judge at ringside robert paolino scored the bout 97 92. judge steve weisfeld tallied 99 90 and judge glenn feldman saw it at 97 92. all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision in the new Continental America's lightweight champion in the red corner, Tony Lightning Louis. Well, in the past, he hadn't done too good when he went south. But you know what? He did pretty good tonight, winning here in the United States. Now he can go back north. And it's going to feel pretty comfortable. He's going to feel great. He's got a baby boy coming next month. He dedicated tonight's performance to his son. So he'll come out a winner. Congratulations to Tony Lewis. Coming up next, it's Sports Center for Teddy Atlas, Bernardo Asuna, Brian Campbell, and the entire Friday Night Fights crew. I'm Todd Grisham. We'll see you next week in Biloxi, Mississippi.